So many Christian country Maharaj has been preaching, inspiring so many devotees. And everywhere here we go to Mayapur, Maharaj is leading Mayapur Yatra, living such an austere life there, inspiring so many devotees. In fact, it's our great fortune that Maharaj is among us. So let's welcome Maharaj and express our gratitude to Maharaj for kindly coming here by chanting. Oh, 
हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे गोर हरि बो हरि बो हरि बो निताय गोर हरि बो जय जय प्रभु पाद प्रभु पाद प्रभु पाद जय शिव प्रभु पाद गौर प्रेमानंद हरि बो नम ओम विष्णु पदाय कृष्ण पृष्ठाय भूतले श्रीमाति भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नीति नामने नमस्ते सरस्वती देवी गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पश्चात देश तारिणे ओम नमो भागवते वसुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नर चरोम दैवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुधेरय नष्ट प्रयशु वद्रेशु नित्यम भागवत सेवाया भागवती उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवती नैष्ट We are reading Shrimad Bhagavatam, Canto Three, Chapter Number Twenty One, Text Number Twenty One. Yeah. Tam Tano Bhutya Parata Kriyatam Swamaya Vartita. लोका तंत्र नमा अभिक्षण नम नम नमा पद सरोज ओपीयसी काम वर्षम तम ताता क्रिया स्व 
Tantra Maya Yavartita Loka Tantram Namami Abhikshnam Namani Apada Sarojam Opiyasi Kama Varsham Tam Tuanu Buddhya Parata Kriyartam Swamaya Yavartita Loka Tantram Namami Abhikshnam Namani Yapada Sarojam Alpiyasi Kama Varsham Tam Tuanu Buddhya Parata Kriyartam Swamaya Yavartita Loka Tantram Namami Abhikshna Namami Abhikshnam Namani Yapadha Namami Abhikshnam Namani Yapadha Sarojam Alpiyasi Kama Varsham Okay, good. 
Toi, you, Anubhutya, by realizing Uparata, disregarded, Kriya, enjoyment of fruitive activities, Artam, in order that, Swamayaya, by your own energy, Vartata, brought, brought about, Lokatantram, the material worlds, Namami, offer obeisances, Abhikshnam, continuously, Namaniya, worshipable, Pabhadasarojam, lotus feet, Alpiyasi, on the, on the insignificant, Kama, desires, Varsham, showering. Translation, I continuously offer my respectful obeisances unto your lotus feet, of which it is worthy to take shelter, because you shower all benedictions on the you shower all benedictions on the in, on the insignificant to give all living entities detachment from fruitive activity by realizing you you have expanded these material worlds by your own energy purport by Srila Prabhupada everyone therefore whether he desires material enjoyment liberation or the transcendental loving service of the Lord should engage once should engage himself in offering obeisances unto the Supreme Lord because the Lord can award everyone his desired can the Lord can award everyone his his okay this, oh what happened twenty one the Lord can award everyone his desired benediction. In Bhagavad Gita, the Lord affirms, Yeyata Mam Prapajante, anyone who desires to be a successful enjoyer in this material world is awarded that benediction by the Lord. Anyone who wants to be liberated from the entanglement of this material world is given liberation by the Lord. And anyone who desires to constantly engage in his service in full Krishna consciousness is awarded that benediction by the Lord. For material enjoyment, he has prescribed so many ritualistic sacrificial performances in the Vedas. And thus people may take advantage of those instructions and enjoy material life in higher planets or in a noble aristocratic family. These processes are mentioned in the Vedas and one can take advantage of them. It is similar with those who want to be liberated from this material world. Unless one is disgusted with the enjoyment of this material world, he cannot aspire for liberation. Liberation is for one who is disgusted with material enjoyment. Vedanta Sutra says therefore, Atato Brahma Jignasa. Those who have given up the attempt to be happy 
in this material world can inquire about the absolute truth. For those who want to know the absolute truth, the Vedanta Sutra is available, as is Srimad Bhagavatam, the actual explanation of Vedanta Sutra. Since Bhagavad Gita is also Vedanta Sutra, by understanding Srimad Bhagavatam, Vedanta Sutra or Bhagavad Gita, one can obtain real knowledge. When one obtains real knowledge, he becomes theoretically one with the Supreme. And when he actually begins the service of Brahman or Krishna consciousness, he is not only liberated but situated in his spiritual life. Similarly, for those who want to lord it over material nature, there are so many departments of material enjoyment. Material knowledge and material science are available and the Lord provides the persons who want to enjoy them. The conclusion is one, one should worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead for any benediction. The word Kama Varsham is very significant for it indicates that he satisfies the desires of anyone who approaches him. But one who sincerely loves Krishna and yet wants material enjoyment is in perplexity. Krishna, being very kind towards him, gives him an opportunity to engage in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. And so he gradually forgets the hallucination. We'll just read the translation again. I continuously offer my respectful obeisances unto your lotus feet, of which it is worthy to take shelter, because you shower all benedictions on the insignificant. To give all living entities detachment from fruitive activity by realizing you, you have expanded these material worlds by your own energy. Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Nama Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Bandeham Shri Guru Shri Yata Padakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajevam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhanitamscha He Krishna Karana Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagadpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanchana Gorange Radhe Vrindavanishwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Vancha Kaupa Tarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patita Nam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Nama Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadegor Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare We're hearing the words of Kardama Muni he is offering prayers to the Supreme Lord. Kardama Muni, in the beginning of his life, was a great yogi and he practiced Astanga Yoga for a period of 10,000 years. 
and after practicing Astanga Yoga for 10,000 years, understand it was Satya Yuga, people live long time. In Satya Yuga, people live one lakh years. The average life was 100,000 years. So he spent the first 10,000 years engaged in Astanga Yoga. And the result of his Astanga Yoga was the Lord, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, appeared to him. And we are hearing the, the prayers offered by Kardama Muni to the Lord. He is offering his obeisances. That is the first business of a person. When we meet the personality of Godhead, we should fall down without any reservation. We offer dandavats, right? Danda, fall like a stick. Uh, so in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna also describes confidential knowledge is to engage our mind in thinking of Krishna, become my devotee, offer obeisances to me, and worship me with love. So offering obeisances is one of the items of devotional service prescribed by Lord Krishna himself for all devotees. Sometimes people don't like to bow down before Krishna. Srila Prabhupada explained to such people who don't like to bow to Krishna that you don't like to bow to Krishna but you have to bow to old age. You have to bow down to disease. You have to bow down to death. You don't like to bow down to those things but you are forced to bow down. We bow down willingly to Krishna. We are happy to bow, down, to bow down before Lord Krishna. And the result of bowing down before Lord Krishna is that we won't have to worry about old age, disease and death. So Srila Prabhupada explained like this to those persons who don't like to bow down of course, there are different ways you can bow down. Sometimes people in their old age or bad health, they're not able to bow down. But at least within our mind, we can bow down. We may not bow down with the body, but we can offer obeisances with the mind and we can offer obeisances with words. Just like when Lord Balaram came into the Naimisharanya and then uh, Ramaharshan Sutta was there and all the sages, all of the sages, they all offered respects to Lord Balaram. Some bowed down, others stood up, others folded their hands and offered respects in this way. But Ramaharshan didn't do anything. He didn't show any respect for Lord Balaram. So Lord Balaram then considered the situation and removed him. And he was replaced by his son, Sutta Goswami. So Kardama Muni is describing the power of the Lord. That the Lord can fulfill the desires of him. All the devotees he can satisfy, he can give all kinds of benedictions. Uh, but devotees of the Lord actually they don't have any material desires. We see in Chaitanya Charitamrita, Krishna Das Kaviraj describes uh, Akama Sarva Kamova Moksha Kama Udaradi. Tivrena Bhakti Yogena Yajeta Purusham. Akam, oh, this is Chaitanya, this is Srimad Bhagavatam. Sorry, I'm quoting Srimad Bhagavatam. Akama Sarva Kamova, Moksha Kam. Whether one has all desires, no material desires, or desires liberation, one should worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead. 
And then the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Krishna Das Kaviraj describes that some people have, they desire liberation, some people desire material benedictions, some people have no desires. Uh, Bhukti, Mukti, Siddhikami, Sakali, Ashanta. The Bhukti, they want material enjoyment. Mukti, they want liberation. Siddhi, they want yoga perfections. Bhukti, Mukti, Siddhikami, Sakali, Ashanta. They're never peaceful. They have desires, material desires. Even the desire for liberation is material. The desire for yoga perfection is also material. You want the Asta Siddhis, that is also material. So these people are never peaceful. Bhukti, Mukti, Siddhi, Kami, Sakali, Ashanta, Krishna, Bhakti, Niskam, Sa, Esha, Shanta. But the devotee of Krishna, he is peaceful because the devotee of Krishna has no material desire. He has desires but not material desires. Understand that desires can be purified, spiritual desire, a desire simply to serve Lord Krishna and to do activities which will please Lord Krishna. Just like when we offer obeisances, it is pleasing to Krishna. When he sees us bow before him, it is pleasing to Krishna. When Krishna sees us worship his pure devotee, and it is pleasing to Krishna when he sees the devotees chanting and dancing as they chant his holy name. So we have to understand how to give pleasure to Lord Krishna. That is a pure desire. That is not a material desire. It is a spiritual desire. It's very interesting because Kadama Muni has some material desire. Those of you who have been reading this text in the Srimad Bhagavatam, you'll know that in a few verses the Lord is going to explain to Kardama Muni that don't worry, I'm arranging everything for you. I'm sending a very qualified young girl to <laughs> and you should accept her as your wife and in this way you can enjoy the, the Grihastha Ashram. So Kardama Muni, after 10,000 years of Astanga Yuga, he still has some material desire. Understand, it's the process of Astanga Yoga is not so powerful as Bhakti Yoga. Only Bhakti Yoga can take away the material desires, can burn up all the desires. That is the unique feature of Bhakti Yoga. Other yoga processes will not remove the material desires from the heart. So we have to understand that material desires to worship the Lord to get material desires is not pure devotion but it's better than worshipping other gods. We see you know now today is we're beginning I think uh, Navratri, right? Yes, so that festival is going on. We see people worshipping other gods, right? There's a lot of other gods here in, in Delhi, right? <laughs> Many gods. So we have to understand who is the Supreme Lord. And Prabhupada narrated himself, he told how uh, he saw one man came from Europe, he came from Germany actually, He'd been met by some members of the Gaudiya Math and he came to India and then he went around the temples and naturally coming from Europe he's curious to see all the different temples and he went one temple to an, he was there in Calcutta and he went to you know these different places where they have the 
the Kali temple and the Durga temple and then there's of course Ganesh also he has a lot of temples and Lord Shiva he, he saw so many temples and he saw in many of these most of these temples he saw that the deity is engaged in different activities she has a big sword in her hand or she has a trident and she's <laughs> killing some creature or something, you know. The, 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 God, the deity is engaged in so many activities. But then he came to the, the temple of the Gaudiya Vaishnavas and he saw Lord Krishna playing on the flute with Srimati Radharani. And he understood the unique difference between Radha and Krishna, the temple of Radha and Krishna, and all of the other temples. And he understood, he was a very intelligent man, he understood this must be the Supreme God. Because all the other gods, they're all busy doing different things. They have to do this, they have to do that, kill that one, do the, you know, so many things. But he came and he saw Radha and Krishna and they're simply enjoying. So he understood this is the Supreme Lord. So we want to, we want to understand who is actually the Supreme? Ekala Ishwara Krishna or Sabhridya. All others are his servants. So Mother Durga, she is also one of the servants. All of the demigods, they're all engaged in service for the Supreme Lord. We have to understand this. And people who have material desires, however, we know not everybody is a pure devotee. We do have, there will be many people with material desires. So even you have material desires, we can approach Lord Krishna. We can approach Krishna. As we quote it, from Srimad Bhagavatam, Sukadeva Goswami said, if you have all material desires or no material desires or desire liberation, whatever you desire, you should worship the Supreme Lord, Krishna. So, we have material desires and you worship Lord Krishna. And Lord Krishna is very thoughtful before he will fulfill our material desires. He will consider is this person asking for something which is really good for him? Is it actually beneficial? Is it really going to help him? He's asking me for this, some, for some material benediction. I was in the temple in Hong Kong one time, many years ago now. So some life members had come. And the, the, there was a, they were a husband and wife. And the, the wife was a, an actress, you know, she was in the m movie. And so she met Tamal Krishna Goswami and she said to Tamal Krishna Goswami, please bless me that I can become famous. <laughs> <laughs> you know, very interesting, you know, she had that desire. <laughs> the, oh, she met a nice, a wonderful devotee, Tamal Krishna Goswami, a very elevated, pure devotee, and she said, please bless me that I can become famous. <laughs> it, not really the best thing to want, you know. <laughs> fame, fame is not really something which, I'm, I think people who are famous, they often wish that they were not famous. Prabhupada told the story about Mahatma Gandhi. How Mahatma Gandhi, you know, he was so famous, people were all chanting, Mahatma Gandhi ki jai. <laughs> Mahatma, everywhere, everywhere, Mahatma Gandhi ki jai. And Mahatma Gandhi was just tired of it, you know, he said, I'm so tired, I could die. <laughs> he actually said like that. He was so disgusted. So he, he didn't want fame, you know. Uh, but sometimes you get these things you don't want. So we have to be very careful in approaching the Supreme Lord. 
what to ask for what to ask for when we pray we should know what to ask for I was remembering how Prabhupada met this one man in, the, in New York Prabhupada met this one man he was a, an, a Negro man colored man you know and he, he was a gospel singer he sang songs about God and about religion He's, and he played the guitar and he sang songs you know and he was famous he had recordings and so on so he came to Prabhupada and he said to Prabhupada he said Swamiji what to pray for so, so to him although he was a, 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 a missionary a Christian preacher he didn't know, he wasn't clear what he should actually be praying for. And, and this is true wherever you go, you know, Hindu temples, you know, what do they pray for in the Hindu temple? You know, give me a nice home and a nice wife all by the sea, Om Jai Jagadish Hari. <laughs> Right? Often something like that, you know, material. And in Christianity, they have the famous prayer which they say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Give us this day our daily bread. So they pray to God, give us our daily bread. <laughs> but that is material desire. You know, you pray like that. That is not pure devotion. You pray to God to give you bread, or you pray to God to give you long life. <laughs> they have so many sayings in China, <laughs> like that in China that you know, give give you give me blessing. Yeah, you, I I give you blessing. You will live to be as as old as the South Mountain and as opulent as the North Sea. Shobi Nan Shan Furu Dong Hai. You know, because I preach in China, so this is saying that in China, that may you live as long as the South Mountain. That's a long life, you know, mountains, you know, how long did mountains? And may you be as opulent, you know, people all want opulent. You should be opulent as a Furu Donghai, or the East, the East Sea. Because in the sea, there's a lot of wealth. Pearls and onyx and coral and so many different things are there in the sea. So that's a blessing which people want. Oh, very kind. Yes, thank you. I want that blessing. So the, this man, Gary Davis, his name was Reverend. Reverend means if he's a real a minister of religion and you see so he was a minister of religion and he was asking Prabhupada what to pray for should we pray to be famous Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says Nadanam Nijanam Nasundarim right Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he I don't even want liberation I just simply want devotional service birth after birth so Prabhupada told the man to Prabhupada, of course, it was very clear what to pray for. That we should simply pray, Oh, Supreme Lord Krishna, please engage me in your service. Please accept me. Please give me the strength to serve you. That is the prayer of the devotee. We simply pray in that way that we can be engaged in the service of the Lord. So often we're blinded by material desires. Prabhupada uses the word hallucination here in the purport. We sometimes you know hallucinate. We imagine something. It's just you know it's all illusion. It's a hallucination. It's not real but we're thinking we think if I get just like the lady said she wanted to be famous she thought if she became famous that would be success 
but actually it would just be the beginning of our problems. Material life, all of our material desires are never satisfied. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna was asked by Arjuna, why do we perform sinful activities, even unwilling, as if engaged by force? And Lord Krishna told, it is due to lust, which is born of contact of the modes of nature, and later transformed into wrath. And then Lord Krishna went on, that lust burns like fire and is never satisfied. Never satisfied. That is the nature of the passion, the mode of passion, Raja Gun, passion. It's very popular. People promote it. I saw the restaurant, they wrote on the window of the restaurant, Come and taste the passion. <laughs> In other words, you know, <laughs> a lot of chili and <laughs> whatever. And sometimes you get, you see the car. They say, feel the passion. You know, sit behind the wheel, put your foot on the accelerator and feel the passion. They're thinking, people are thinking, Passion is enjoyment. We're thinking passion is going to give me pleasure. But in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes the result of the mode of passion is distress. The result of actions in the mode of passion simply bring distress. People don't think about that. They're thinking, oh, let me enjoy. You can enjoy, but not for very long. A little bit of passion and a lot of suffering. That is the nature of the material world. It is predominantly much more suffering than enjoyment. People work all week to enjoy the weekend. Right? We can, they go to Mathura, go to Vrindavan. We have our villa in Vrindavan. We will go for the week. And all week they have to work. From morning till night, they have to work like an ass to go and enjoy for the weekend. And then when the summer the vacation comes, we will go to Masuri. We will go to the mountains. We will go to Mount Meru. You know, the demigods, they live like that. They go to Mount Meru to enjoy. And so we have our replica of Ma Mount Meru, Missouri, right? <laughs> like this, people are trying to forget the suffering. They're working so hard to enjoy. They work suffering for little bits of pleasure. The enjoyment of the material world is very short and flickering. Lochan Das Thakur describes in his song, Bajahari Mana, he says that we serve wicked and miserly people just to get some chapala sukha. Chapala sukha laba lagiri. Little flickering pleasure. That is the material world. You want pleasure? It's not wrong to want pleasure. But we have to know what is real pleasure. There is pleasure like the hog and the dog. You see the hogs and the dogs, how they eat and how they mate. No, so that is the pleasure of these, these creatures. It's a very low pleasure, very inferior. But if you want real pleasure, there is the higher pleasure. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna speaks about param drisva nivartate, the higher taste. We have to 
instead of looking for the low pleasure like the hog and the dogs think of the higher pleasure the real pleasure which is there and that pleasure is within that pleasure comes from the soul by engaging in the service of the Supreme Lord when we connect to the Supreme Lord Krishna then we actually enjoy we experience real pleasure we are trying to find the pleasure in the desert Prabhupada would quote the Hindi poet about uh, the happiness of the material world is like a drop of water in the desert you're in the desert and we give you a drop of water one drop it won't satisfy the thirst so material life is like that we're looking for the pleasure we're trying to find pleasure in the family in the society and friends but we've forgotten the real family and the real friend which are there in the spiritual world we have turned away from Krishna so forgetting Krishna since time immemorial we come into this material world and we become more and more covered by the material nature we have to revive our dormant Krishna consciousness so the process is simply Shravanam Kirtan Vishnu the more we hear and chant and remember Lord Krishna then we can be begin to experience real pleasure real happiness it is there the soul's nature is joyful the nature of the soul Brahma Bhuta Prasanatma right one who knows his Brahman he's a joyful soul you want to be joyful we have to understand Brahman so Prabhupada quotes Vedanta Sutra Atato Brahma Jig now Atato means now now you are a human you have a human body you have education you can understand what is matter what is spirit we have to understand this then we have to work in proper consciousness of God so this is human life human life is not meant for just eating sleeping mating defending human life is meant for atma gyan cultivating atma gyan understanding the real nature of the soul and our eternal relationship with Lord Krishna Hare Krishna any questions how did Lord Kapila become his son? Yes, if Kapila was not pure, he was not pure. How Lord was not pure? His son as well as he gave the son also to God. Uh huh. Well, the Lord chooses where he appears. So he chose Kadama Muni. And the Lord's purpose in appearance was to, to give instruction to Devahuti. And Kadama Muni, as soon as uh, he had the family, then he left home. He didn't stay to be with the Lord. He went away to perfect himself to take sannyas and to, to, and to perfect himself so if he had been really pure he would have been happy to stay there with the Lord and take advantage of the Lord's presence but instead he left he didn't wait around he went off to perfect himself by renouncing everything so he he did have some kind of desire there you could say it was the plan of the Lord to engage him in this way 
but the, the Lord as Kapila, he is giving his real mercy to Devahuti. It's Devahuti who is taking advantage of Lord Kapila. Yes, ups and downs, it's one of the phases of devotional service mentioned there in uh, uh, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur's uh, Madhurya Kadambini, he talks about ups and downs in devotional service. Well, we have to understand these ups and downs are coming due to the mind. Actually, it's the mind which is reflecting. Mind is thinking, oh, this is so good and we feel so up. And then the mind is all down, I'm so, oh my, you know, you know we feel depressed and we feel like nothing's happening, nothing's being achieved, I'm not accomplishing anything, and you think maybe I'm wasting my time. So like it, it's actually due to our mental consciousness. We have to therefore couldn't get that mind controlled, get that mind focused on Krishna, bring it to Krishna, focus it on devotional service ups and downs, we may say good times, bad times, you know, astrologers talk about that, you know, oh, uh, Rahu Kala is coming, oh, bad time, right? We have, to, we have to do it quick, before Rahu Kala, or after Rahu Kala, but Rahu Kala is a bad time. And so, that, But that's all material. If we're on the transcendental platform, there's no question of good or bad times, it's all absolute time. It's all for the service of Krishna. So ups and downs is actually our own consciousness which is up or down. And we have to control that consciousness. That consciousness is coming from the mind. We have to focus the mind on the lotus feet of Lord Krishna and just simply engage ourselves wholeheartedly in the service of Krishna. And in this way we overcome the mind. So this, this endeavor to control the mind, to, to bring the mind back to Krishna. Just like every day we chant Japa, the mind wanders, we have to bring it back. One of the uh, devotees, uh, he used to say, we're training our gladiators to conquer the mind in the arena of Japa. <laughs> You know, the gladiators, the Roman soldiers, you could imagine them with their big swords, you know. So, they, sometimes these gladiators, they go and confront lions, you know, a pack of lions, and they'd fight the lions. So, they were great fighters, you know. And so, the same way, we have to fight the mind. The mind is the, the uncontrolled mind is the greatest enemy. Because of the mind, we're feeling down. Of course, when you feel up, but you don't mind so much. That's not so much a. The real problem comes when you're down. You can feel really down. Oh, I'm really down. Oh, we feel so bad. You know, you have to. We have to understand. This is just the mind. The world is going on. Everything is continuing. Why are we feeling down? It's simply our own consciousness, our own attitude which is the problem. So we have to conquer over that attitude. We have to be positive, not negative. We feel down, negative. we're feeling negative. This, oh, nothing is happening. The temple is not built yet, so many years we're building the temple. I don't know, in my lifetime maybe we'll never finish the temple. I, you know, we can get very negative. You can be very negative about things. Just like you give someone a glass and it's half full. So someone said, oh, 
it's half empty. But someone else said, no, it's half full. It's the same glass. <laughs> you know, it's the same glass. It's the same amount of liquid in it. One person sees it as half empty, another person sees it as half full. So somebody's positive and somebody's negative. We have to see things in a positive manner. We want to be positive. We want to see good. We want to see what's happening. Don't see what's not happening. Don't see all the problems. See the good. See the good side of things. Thank you so much. Um, Maharaj, I was observing you when you were dancing in the Kirtan. I wanted to know, after understanding the philosophy, having access to books, after reading it, sometimes the principles become like a template. We are everyday reading, seeing things. So how can one maintain its freshness and those lessons in the long run? Because the things are seen, we are seeing, we, are, we have to do things on a regular basis. Uh -huh. So you mean like you get tired of hearing you're not the body? <laughs> How to always feel the same enthusiasm when we hear the same instructions over and over again? <laughs> yes. Well, how to maintain your enthusiasm hearing inst the instructions over and over again? You have to become a preacher yourself. You have to get people together and start teaching. You have to share what you know. You've heard everything, now you have to use it. It's hearing is the beginning, but then you go, you hear nicely, then you will repeat. New chant. So you have to begin, you have to yourself teach what you know. You have to make use of what you know. We may not know very much, but whatever we know, we have to use it. So, you know, you've heard, you've been hearing for some time, you come, now you have to start using it, you have to go and start telling other people. Get a group together and start teaching people and sharing what you know. Not that you just say, oh, I'm, oh, I just hear. I'm just, a, you, you, you know, the, the students have to become teachers. That's important. You don't always remain the student. You have to also become the teacher. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told the, the, the Brahmana in Kurmadesh, Yari Deki Tari Kaho Krishna Upadesh. Amara Gai Guru Hana Tarai Desh. Mahaprabhu said, by my order, you become the guru. You go and teach. Tell everyone about Krishna. Right? This is, this is Mahaprabhu's instruction. So you have to take that up. And you have to start teaching. Thank you so much, Thank you so much for such a nice lecture. It was really uh, great instructions. Uh, Maharaj, just when you speak, you feel like slow bar, just used to say the same things. We as lectures, the patient text to him in words. So just one that you had time with Dopa, Sheila Dopa, the most greatest personality. Can you share some personal dealings with the Prabhupada, Sheila Prabhupada? Some personal. Well, you know, I wasn't an intimate associate of Srila Prabhupada. I'm, I'm a very insignificant devotee. You know, I'm not a big leader or anything. So I wasn't significant. And I would just, when Prabhupada was around, I would just try to hear him. You know, we say, don't get too close, you know. <laughs> don't go too far away, but don't get too close either, you know. To be close to Prabhupada, you know, you would have to be really... You, you know, you're taking a risk <laughs> because Prabhupada, you know, if you do something wrong, Prabhupada will let you know. <laughs> yeah. So you got to be very careful. So the people who were serving Prabhupada directly, they were very great souls, you know. Even Prabhupada's son, Prabhupada's son, I was in the temple in Calcutta must have been 1976 or something. And so his son would call up sometimes. You know, there were no mobile phones in those days, but we had landlines. 
we had a phone in the temple and his son called up to the temple he just wanted to speak to someone and so somehow I picked up the phone and he said this is Vrindavan I'm Vrindavan Prabhupada's son oh yeah 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 you know, you know. I, and so then he started talking to me and, he said, and one of the things he said to me which I remember he said you know you don't know how strict my father was <laughs> I said, well, I know a little bit, you know. <laughs> you know I, may, I may not know like you, but I do know a little bit. I understand a little bit. The Prabhupada was, was strict, you know. He, he wanted things done properly, you know. And you had to do it nicely, you know. You had to have it together. If you blew it, you know, he'd let you know, you know. Yeah. So Prabhupada was uh, quite careful about doing everything himself and he, was, and he brought that into the Krishna consciousness movement that make every, do everything very nicely. We had a program, well, actually I didn't arrange it, but one, one local Indian man in London, he arranged a program for Prabhupada. He had some deities and he wanted Prabhupada to go there to install the deities and he said Prabhupada we can do a Bhagavad Sapta there you can come every night for a week and give class and Prabhupada said okay yeah alright you know so first night Prabhupada came and we did the deity installation and Prabhupada gave a lecture and then he went back to the temple and he said that hall is terrible. I'm not going to go there again. He said, you, you told the sannyasi, another sannyasi was there, one of Prabhupada's disciples. He said, you go. <laughs> and so you had to have it nice. You know, you want Prabhupada to come. You're going to have a good place, you know. But they brought Prabhupada to this one place. It, it wasn't, it was okay. You know, it was average, but it wasn't the best. So Prabhupada went the first night, he said, okay. He said, somebody else go, I'm not going there again. That hall is horrible. <laughs> and Prabhupada would always check the prasada. How is the prasada? What are we distributing to the guests? He wanted to see what prasadam the guests are getting. He would check it and see how it was, make sure it was all good. And he was very concerned about the deities, the worship of the deities. Everything had to be perfect, you know. One time we had in London, we had Radha Landanishwara and above, Radha, above the head was Jagannath Baladev Subhadra. They were on a platform above Radha and Landanishwara. So it happened one morning we had put a lot of vases around Radha Landanishwara. We didn't put the vases up on Jagannath yet. And Prabhupada came immediately and noticed, why no flowers up here, you know? Prabhupada picked up on it, you know, he, he would see everything. And one day also we, we were rushing, somehow we got the Parampara pictures the wrong order. <laughs> Prabhupada noticed. <laughs> Am I the only one to see these things? Doesn't anybody else see these things? <laughs> Prabhupada would say like that, yeah. So Prabhupada, you know, we really have to be on our toes, you know, to <laughs> like that. Okay, any other question? All right, thank you very much. Oh yes, you have a question? Uh, Yeah, you have to become determined. You have to be determined about these things. Just like I would see devotees like Jayadweda Swami 
I remember Jayadweta Swami, I was, it, this was in New York one time, it was uh, Mongol RT, and Jayadweta Swami was not well, he was sick, but he came on, on the, crawling on the floor to come to Mongol RT. He, he was so determined that I must come to Mongol RT, that even he couldn't walk, but he came crawling to go to Mongol RT. It, it meant so much to him. So from the example of others, we learn these things, you see. You learn from the example. Yad yad achariti shrestha tad tad evetaro. Whatever actions the shrestha perform, then other people follow. So we saw the example. We saw Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada was very sick. And the devotee said to Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada, you don't need to give class today. One of us can give class. Prabhupada said, no, I have to give class. If I don't give class, then you will think it's all right for you not to give class when you are sick. <laughs> right. Now Prabhupada 75, 80 years old and he's still giving class when he's sick. But he, he saw us, we're just young, 20, 25, 30. He doesn't want us to think, oh, I'm sick, I won't give class today. You know, we, we think we'll be like, Prabhupada didn't give class when he was sick, I won't give class. So Prabhupada said, I don't want that. I'm giving class, you also have to give class. <laughs> so strict, yeah? So the example, Example speaks louder than words. Just giving instructions to people, that's not as good. You have to see the example. So our Krishna consciousness movement is meant for that. We, we want to show the best example to people. Just like you, Delhi, you people here were distributing prasadam, right? You were doing wonderful seva during the COVID. You were distributing so much prasadam, so many plates of prasadam. So that was very wonderful. It, it created a very nice m impression about Krishna consciousness movement. Yeah. But certainly it, it goes in history, it's in the history books, how Dwarka Yatra distributed so many hundreds of thousands of plates of prasadam during the COVID. So, like that, example, the examples have to be there. So we should always think like that. Am I being a good example for others? You know, I have to be an example. We should think like that. If I don't do something, it's, it's, it's not setting the right example. We want to always show the right example to impress on others the importance. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Sorry, ladies. Chinese people are very challenging. They are challenging, 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 challenging. Oh, Delhi, very difficult. Also. Do you think it's easy to preach here in India? Very difficult also here, in Delhi. Everybody knows everything, right? <laughs> I know everything, I've been there, I, I know, yeah, I know. Very difficult preaching. But some places you go, some places that it's a blank slate. They don't know anything. So it, it's an open field. So, try to go. <laughs> There's so much to be done. Yes? Okay. So, thank you very much. Hare Krishna, Srimad Bhagavatam ki. Srila Prabhupada ki. God Premanande. You so many as Bhakti Vinodas Nasim Swami Maharaj ki. So we are so grateful to Maharaj for such a wonderful, enlightening lecture, such an interview, 
really it was a great mercy of Maharaj and all of us. We all are the children here at Iskand Dwarka. So we request Maharaj, whenever he comes to Delhi, please kindly uh, come here to Dwarka. Can you bless us? Thank you so much to Maharaj and to the Brozi also. Kindly uh, bring this energy. So let's express our gratitude to Maharaj from the core of our heart by chanting Hare Krishna! Hare Krishna! Krishna! Krishna.